not American? No, I'm from Australia, in Melbourne. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so does magic have an opposite, and if so, what is it? Yeah, the opposite of magic, I guess, could best be stated as materialist methodology, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Right. How do you define open-mindedness? Mindedness. How did I find open-mindedness? How do you define? Oh, how do I define it? Yeah. Um... Willingness to believe that you are wrong, basically. Simple as that. It's kind of a basic answer, but yeah. Yeah, right. Fuck. This is a tough one. What are some kind of examples of that? Um, like for example, scientists like most scientists are open-minded in the sense that like whatever theories we have about the world they are willing to accept a new theory if the evidence supports it right yeah but at at the same time they're also most of them kind of closed-minded in the sense that they believe that the universe is necessarily a material thing that materialism is correct basically yeah. and a scientist most scientists will never be convinced or even swayed to entertain the idea that materialism might be wrong or incomplete yeah right so <clears throat> what do you know about mindfulness mindfulness um well, i've read the power of now by eckhart tolle uh, I've uh, I know a little about like meditation and stuff. Yeah. Basically, I know mindfulness. I think it means like um, paying attention to your own stream of thoughts. Yeah. Like, w- watching your own ego, watching your own headspace. Yeah. So um. What is consciousness to you? To me, uh, consciousness is an emergent property of complex systems. So I think that everything is conscious, like right, right down to the strings that make up the particles that make up the universe. Yeah, right. But I believe that... Uh, as the complexity of a system scales up, uh, like the informational complexity, as the informational complexity of the system scales up, so does consciousness. Yeah. What's your favorite magical text, and what is the key to their magic in a nutshell? Well, I haven't read a lot of texts that are explicitly about magic. Um, like, what what would you hmm, classify as a magical text? Uh, maybe Aleister Crowley or um, the Kabbalion, the Minus Hieroglyphica, the Emerald Tablets. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, I've smoked DMT a lot of times, so I would have to say the Akashic Records, even though I couldn't quote hardly any information from it. Yeah. I thought that were a theoretical, that was a theoretical concept. 
What, the Akashic Records? Yeah, like it's a library of everything. <coughs> oh, well, when I smoked DMT a couple times, uh, some entity showed me a book that, you know... Was that maybe the Red Book? It, like, like a physical book, like a codex. Yeah. Like a, a Bible or a dictionary, except that... What was the result of it? What? What was the result of this book? The result of it? Yeah. Well, the result of it was basically... I didn't bring much specific information back, but the book contained all the information about this universe yeah, right. that there is. Yeah. So, so what I did bring back from it is just a firm belief that the human understanding of our universe is woefully incomplete and that it is much larger and stranger than any of us have ever imagined. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, not much is very substantive, but... Right. That's the thing about DMT. You forget 99% of what you learn from each trip. Yeah, because there's so many of that you go through. Mm-hmm. What are your favorite texts in general? Mm. Sorry, could you repeat it? Your favorite texts, uh, books. Oh, my favorite texts. Um, I like... Uh, I like Hi Cal and Pi Cal by Alexander Shulkin. Um, nice. That is a good one. Yeah, yeah. I like the works of Karl Marx. Um, and let's see. I like uh, the C programming language by Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kernigan. That's a good book. Brutal. <coughs> um, the Dragon Book compiler design. I don't remember what the exact title of it is, but it has a dragon on the cover, and it's about compiler design. Right. Um, is that like a simple code? Uh, it's it's a book about how to write a compiler, pretty much. Right. So, you know what a compiler is? Uh, I'm guessing it's what organizes code to run. Somehow. So, a compiler takes source code written in a programming language and converts it to an executable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other books. I have a book called Understanding the Linux Kernel, which I've flipped through and tried to read, but it's really, really hard to read because the Linux kernel is really complicated. Yeah, and right. I do like it when I have read. That's cool. Um, is that written by, um, yeah. what's his name? Um, uh, Linus Torvin? Uh, no, it's not written by Torvalds himself. Oh, okay. Although, yeah, it would be cool if he did write a book about the kernel, but I don't think he has time. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, I like Ender's Game. And I like the other books in the series. What's the moral the to the story of Ender's Game? The moral of the story? Yeah. Um, the moral of the story... Well, I guess one of them is... Um, don't do genocide. <laughs> well, that's more of a moral of, like, the entire series. Um... Right. 
I guess you could sum up the moral of the first book as like don't don't let yourself be driven by other people's expectations. Right. right? Don't let other people's expectations control your life. Yeah, don't let them project over you. Yeah, because Ender, the main character, he let everyone else's expectations control his life. I mean, he was literally the product of a selective breeding program that the government did. Yeah, right. And so he consequently was tricked into committing genocide. Right. Crazy. Yeah. But yeah, the Ender's Game series is really good. Um, Also, the culture books, the culture novels by E.A.N.M. Banks. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's probably one of my favorite book series. Yeah, cool. We'll check it out. Yeah. Not a very Googleable title, but yeah, the culture. Yeah. Does life have a purpose, um, and if so, what is it? Does life have a purpose? Yeah, the purpose of life is to increase the amount of consciousness that there is. So complexity. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's what is a good question okay. to ask someone you've never met? A good question to ask someone you've never met. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, right, no, a substantive question. Uh, trying to think of one that a person wouldn't ask normally, like, what do you do for a living? Uh, what is your passion well no but don't phrase it like that just like what do you like to do in your free time yeah yeah that's a good one so what do you like to do in your free time I like to code and sometimes also do art yeah, like cool. I'm, good, I'm really good at art and pretty good at painting too. Nice. I like to purchase art and okay. look at it. I bought bought an art piece last Thursday. I get nice. it, get it in about three weeks. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what stories do you think convey the best morals? Jesus aside, what are the teachings of those who display the best morals? So who, who, uh, what stories convey the best? And then what are those teachings? Let me think on that one for a moment. Yeah, it's a tough one. Hmm. Complex. Yeah. I think that uh, Buddhist texts pretty yeah. well fit the bill. That's a popular like, one. Like, like all of them. Yeah. And uh, the Tao Te Ching. Yeah. Is another, another good one. Um, those would be like the very best, I think. I told my mate about the Tao Te Ching and he was he read it and he was like, yeah, it's not that good. And I was like, well, you're an idiot. Yeah. Well, he probably just uh, didn't understand it. So yeah. It's kind of very abstract in some parts. Yeah. I've read it in English and I tried to read it in Chinese, but it's written in ancient Chinese. So... I couldn't understand it. Yeah. How do you define ego? The ego is that to which one refers when one says I. 
Yeah. <coughs> yeah. What's the difference between a healthy ego and a normal ego? And what's the problem with ordinary ego? It's kind of the same question. Difference between a healthy ego and a normal ego? Yeah. Hmm. Well, a healthy ego is really only as big as it needs to be for practical purposes. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. To get things you know, done. Fulfilling, getting things done, yeah. Um, a normal ego includes all sorts of concerns and attachment to other people's perceptions of you and your sense of your own wealth yeah. and status. Okay, so who are your three favorite people from history and why are they your favorites? What did they do that makes them famous? Hmm. There's a lot of people in history, let me think. Yeah, there is a lot of fucking people. How you going? What? Well, who are your three favorite people from history? Yeah, I'm still thinking. Yeah. Um, one of them is definitely Karl Marx. I'm a very far to the left myself. I'm a big fan of his books. Um, a little bit critical of his actual ideas, particularly about like what socialism should be like yep. what, what should happen right after the revolution right <coughs> um, so what should the revolution bring about I think uh, libertarian democratic socialism would be my go to Is that like a... Would a universal basic income cover that? Yeah, so universal basic income, um, free housing, free health care, uh, yeah. all that good stuff. And um, uh, and then like nationalized key industries like rail... Uh, petroleum, agriculture, those sorts of things. Yeah. But also, like, the libertarian part is important. The government should intervene, well, not intervene, but interfere as little as possible yeah. in the personal lives and choices of the people. Yeah. All right, that, uh, that'll conclude this episode of Laws of Babylon. Thanks again. This is uh, Jack McLovin. Thank you.